We spoke about Asian markets, we spoke about the US markets to the final update from our global market wrap. Now, European markets also started the week on the back foot with the French CAC closing 0.8% lower. The German DAX was down 78 points. The British FTSE was uh, closed on Monday for a bank holiday. European markets also reacted to US Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's Jackson Hole speech. ECB board member Isabel Schnabel also echoed the Fed Chair's comments over the weekend. She reaffirmed the view that central banks must act aggressively to tackle rising inflation, even if it means dragging economies into a recession. Alright, that's the global market action. Let's talk about how these cues will impact our own markets. We have Ekta and Nigel joining us now to tell us just that, the market setup, stocks and news and the action from the FNO space as well. Hey guys, a very good morning to both of you. Uh, Ekta, first to you, what is the market setup looking like today? Hi, thanks for that. Well, yes, uh, the Fed chair comments did spook the market. The markets did close in the red, but we were off the lows. Uh, one disconcerting fact, and maybe we need to spot the trend here, is that the FII's net sold over 560-odd crores in yesterday's trading session. The rupee also recovered from the day's low at over 80. It breached over 80 on an intraday basis, but it closed at around 79.96 versus a previous close of around 79.87. For this morning, yes, the U.S. markets did see follow-on selling, so the, they closed less than 1% lower. The U.S. two-year yield was at the highest that we've seen since 2007, and the dollar index is still hovering at those two-decade peaks. European markets closed in the red. Asia largely mixed at this point in time. So let's see what uh, our markets trade as, whether or not there's any kind of uh, buying sustainably which comes through. Brent crude has risen to around $104 per barrel. So that is rising on prospects of OPEC supply cuts. So that would be one important macro trigger to watch out for. Also, I'd watch out for any kind of follow on selling in IT stocks because they had slipped yesterday on US recession concerns and considering that the US markets were lower today as well. Uh, how the, the markets approach the IT stocks would be something that the street would probably watch, watch out for. Oh yes, absolutely. And you spoke about IT stocks. What are the other stocks which will be in focus today, Ekta? Well, yes, uh, I'll be watching out for Reliance Industries because of the AGM takeaways. PNG Health will be reacting to its Q4 numbers. Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences will be in focus on account of an acquisition they've made. Zomato says they have no plan to rebrand Zomato's app to Eternal. The company uh, Mahindra Electric has launched new cargo three-wheeler Zor Grand. IRCTC has said the company has not received any information on the OFS from the government. Sources say there are two bids which have been received for the Shrey Twins under the IBC as the deadline ends. And Fitch has affirmed their Indian oil rating at triple B minus with a stable outlook. So maybe these would be a couple of stocks broadly which would be in focus. Okay, all right, Ekta, thank you so much for all those details. And let's go across to Nigel now, who's joining in with all the cues from the FNO space. Hey, Nigel. Well, morning. Uh, you know, first up on the institutional flows, the FI has sold closer on 500 crores. Or now, in the second half of August, it hasn't been so great. Remember, the first half of August, they were pumping in 1,500 to around 2,000 crores. Or so the FI outflow or the lack of the inflows, that's a bit of a worry. Yesterday, by the way, the institutions were net sellers. Now, we ended lower, and there was some buildup on the Nifty futures, on the Nifty bank futures. So telling you, that there was uh, some bit of short uh, positioning that was taken. And it perfectly ties in because the FIs, they added closure on 11,000 short contracts. They continue to remain net short. Closure on 65% of their positions are on the short side. On the option side, well, they bought puts. In case things go wrong, there is some protection. But what's heartening from a bullish perspective is that they wrote way more puts than calls, telling you that maybe that vicinity of around that 17,000, 17,200 odd could hold out. And two strikes were very active. 17,000 call, 17,000 put. You put the total premium between both these two strikes together, you get close to 250 rupees odd. So it appears that a short straddle is at play. What does that mean? You write the strike or you know the same strike on the call as well as put side, pocket close to 250 rupees odd, and then you're play playing for a broad range, which you know if you punch in 17,300 minus 250 and plus 250, you'll get a broad band, 17,050 to around 17,550 odd. Now, the SGX Nifty suggesting that we're likely to see a bit of a bump up to kickstart trade, but we're not out of the woods. And I say that because there is firm resistance at around that 17,500 to around 17,550. First level of support is yesterday's low, that's 17,160. 
And if things, you know, if that breaks, then the 200 DMA is something that the bulls will like to defend. SGX Nifty starts in the green. Let's see whether or not we can build on from there. Back to you. Okay, all right. Uh, Nigel and Ekta, thanks a lot for joining us. That's